paradigm requirements. A paradigm refers to a framework, model, or conceptual system that serves as a guide for thinking, understanding, and solving a problem within a particular context. In programming, paradigm requirements refer to the specific features that are desired or necessary in a programming language or integrated development environment for a specific project to function in an intended way in order to achieve a purpose through using potentially multiple paradigms. So what we're going to take a look at here is the different type of paradigms that we can look at when we are thinking about creating a project and essentially how to cater them towards what the purpose of the project is in order to satisfy its needs. So remember, as said, we don't just look at these paradigms as standalone. We do look at them as being used in conjunction with each other. And if you think like that, try to reflect on paradigms you've seen based on your own experience with programs where you can see these labels in effect to give you an understanding of what we're talking about here. So firstly is that of simply imperative or procedural. And in this paradigm, we're focusing on specifically the sequence of steps in order to solve a problem. And that's foundation coding. We know that things need to be in a particular set of steps in order for it to execute correctly. So within this paradigm, we need to make sure that the sequence of steps we use is structured, ordered, and makes logical sense in order for the program to function correctly. Secondly, we have that of object orientation. Okay, and this is the use of on-screen objects. And these objects control the flow of the actual program based on the user selection and their interactivity with the program. So there isn't a fixed structure with how the actual user goes through the program. It's going to be based on what objects they are clicking on. Each different on-screen object is coded on its, as its own individual unit, but obviously they relate to each other as well in their execution of code. But you can't always predict which order that the user might predict things and click on them. So think of it in the context of a video game, based on what the user actually selects within the game is what lines of code will execute based on the associated on-screen object. And common types of objects in basic applications is that of text boxes, command buttons, drop-down lists, radio buttons, all of them used in conjunction with each other for different purposes in order to control the flow of the actual user navigating through the object-orientated program. Each one backed up by its own code when the user clicks on it. Thirdly, we have domain specific, and this relates to the context of who we're developing for. So what is the specific domain we are developing for? And that might guide the kind of environment we're trying to create. So this might be we are developing for a scientific domain, a data analysis domain, or a web development domain. And that controls the overall flow and feel of what type of paradigm we're going for when developing for that environment. Next, we have event driven, and this is obviously once again linked to interactivity because we're basically wanting to develop a program that responds to events or user actions. And based on its response, the program will change its behavior in, as said here, allowing a response into event based behavior. And once again, we're thinking things like apps and video games there where you are interacting with the actual game, you do things, the program changes its behavior, and then you respond. That kind of back and forth, which is responsive to input and output. The user's input will influence the, the, the game itself that you're playing, and then the game will give a specific output that will ultimately in turn influence the user's input once again. Very responsive, and that's what we mean by event-driven. Obviously, it's got to be a, a very adaptive program in order to read inputs and change behavior based on those inputs in order to develop a challenging output or a specific required output back to the user that they are hoping for as a part of the purpose of the program. We then have logic programming, which involves specifying logical rules and relationships to solve problems through logical inference and deduction. So here we, once again, back to the methodology behind the actual program, that the steps make sense, but we're talking having, it's not necessarily in pure sequence, like we mentioned with imperative and procedural. Logic couldn't mean that we're going branching down a variety of different pathways to come to conclusion. And that's what we mean by establishing rules and establishing relationships. And obviously this needs to exist within the other paradigms as well, especially if we've got paradigms such as object orientated, where we've got different objects speaking to each other and in event driven, where the program responds to user input. There needs to be a logical backbone that makes everything work together. So establishing relationships through the creation of variables that, uh, that reference different objects and data between different operations in the program is all a foundation of creating that logic. But also the imperative procedural structure that the steps make sense is also important there too. 
Finally, we have that of specifically functional. The program and the concept of treating computation as the evaluation of mathematical functions. We are creating functions within a program. Some of them are inbuilt, as we know, we've got our specific control structures and we can use keywords that do specific things in the program. But in order to make our coding efficient, I mean, many cases we're using formulas that we're creating as our own functions and subroutines as modules, okay, that we are referencing as well. The better we code these as a mathematical formula, the more efficient the program will conduct its operations because machine code and machine language is a mathematical beast and it needs to understand things in a formulaic way. So the whole idea that we've got to treat computation as a mathematical function and try to once again make it logical what we're developing all will be a part of making our program efficient in achieving its purpose and giving outcomes in a timely manner, especially in larger systems that are highly complex, where we need to make sure our calculations are spot on and efficient in how they come about so they can be solved in a timely manner. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of different paradigm requirements. And essentially, as I said, there are different ways of solving a problem okay, within the programming world. And don't see them once again as standalone they can be used and they do overlap with one another but obviously when you're trying to think of a program that you're going to create and who your target audience is and what is its purpose you might think of these ideas in your head as these are directions i might need to address in order to solve the the a customer or client's a query and satisfy their needs with the program we're creating in an efficient way that will make them happy and achieve their purpose